Okay, engineering students, uh, welcome back to this uh, lecture series on the introduction to organic uh, chemistry. Now, um, if you are to look at the lecture notes, you'll see um, uh, there is uh, lecture one, lecture two, lecture three, lecture four, uh, lecture five, and lecture six. So, the one on uh, on alkenes or hydrocarbons, as they are called, saturated hydrocarbons, as they are called, is indicated as uh, lecture six. So there is there are two lectures which uh, I've left, uh, I've not covered. That is reaction mechanisms, which I wait until when we'll be covering. <coughs> excuse me, when we'll be covering uh, proteins. And then there is one on uh, empirical formula, which I'm going to cover when I'll be de uh, dealing with the lecture on, on fuels. So for now, um, I want to move a little bit ahead to the, to the lecture on, on alkenes, yeah? which, uh, which they are called saturated hydrocarbons. Uh, I'll come later, especially we'll be t talking about the next functional group, which are going to be calling alkenes, you're going to understand what we mean by, <coughs> excuse me, saturated hydrocarbons. It means that um, there is no double bond or there is no triple bond. So in this case, it means that they all contain carbon hydrogen single bonds. All right. So the alkene, the name alkene can be said to be split into two, in which there is the word ALK, which uh, uh, which I'm going to be uh, explaining later. Th there's that ALK as the first part of the name, and then there is the, and then, sorry, and then there is the ALE. <coughs> so it means that all alkenes, all alkenes, the name must end with, a N E. So the prefix is supposed to tell you uh, it's it's a short for something called alkyl. Yeah, alkyl is uh, it comes from something called an alkyl substituent. So it's just given the sh the short name of ALK, and it just gives the number of carbon atoms that uh, alkane contains. And I've just given, uh, uh, I don't know whether you can call it a, a table here, and, uh, and some of these uh, letters, uh, what they are called uh, prefix, you may have heard about them. So if the hydrocarbon has got one carbon atom, the prefix will be met, M E T. H. So if it is two carbon atoms, it will be ETH. If it will be three carbon atoms, it will be PROP. If it will be four carbon atoms, it will be BUT. If it is five carbon atoms, it is PENT. Yeah? Familiar words, yeah? yeah? Six carbon atoms, HEX. Seven carbon atoms, HEPT. Eight carbon atoms, OCT. Nine carbon atoms, non, and ten carbon atoms, deck. So as we said, the the suffix uh, will be a and e. So if you're going to add meth plus uh, a and e, you're going to get the name of methane. So if you're going to get a uh, an alkane with one carbon atom, the name will be will be meth. I mean, will be methane. If it will be two carbon atoms, the name will be ethane. If it will be three carbon atoms, the name will be propane, butane. Five carbon atoms, uh, pentane. Six carbon atoms, hexane. Seven carbon atoms, heptane. Eight carbon atoms, octane. Nine carbon atoms, monane. Ten carbon atoms, uh, decane. And I believe you can be able to to see the board one. So carbon 
forms four bonds. Hmm? So in this case, I've just tried to draw them in a, in a linear manner, even though you know that, that in three dimension, the structure exists as a, I think it can be seen well, as a, as a tetrahedral. But just assume uh, all the bonds are linear. This is just for, for illustration. We are just going to show a carbon there, and then there are two bonds horizontal and two bonds vertical. So you're going to show your structure like, like this. So this will be the structure, the linear representation or the two-dimensional representation of, of methane. There will be a, a carbon atoms and then there will be there will be four bonds. So a hydrogen, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. And then for two carbon atoms, there will be carbon attached to another carbon and then each carbon has got four bonds. So so one bond has been taken by this carbon atom. So you're going to draw one, two, three bonds. In this other case, you're going to draw one, two, three. So this will be the structure of, of, of ethane. And just because the, the bond is quite uh, limited, I've just tried to show that in this case, if it will be three, you're going to show three carbon atoms. And then each of the carbon atoms, you're going to, four, to show four bonds, yeah? And, <coughs> excuse me. And just for um, uh, illustration here, I've just moved uh, along this leaf to just show one form for six carbon atoms. In this six carbon atoms I've just shown here, this is carbon number one, carbon number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. And then each carbon atom has got four bonds. So the first carbon atom has got one of them attached to the other carbon atom. So you're going to draw three, three bonds there. So for this, for the ones at the center, for example, like this one, has got two bonds taken up by the carbon atom. So you're going to only show two hydrogens. And that will apply to the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth one. But the sixth one, it will be the same as the first one because there is only one carbon atom attached to it. So you're going to show three hydrogens attached to it. Very simple to illustrate here. Now, it may be easy sometimes, it can be tiresome to draw some of these uh, structures, especially when you'll be looking at, uh, at, at uh, larger hydrocarbons which may contain probably even 20 carbon atoms. You can imagine using a piece of paper and then drawing one, two, three, four, up to 20 carbon atoms and then, and then all those hydrogens. It may, it will just fill your, your paper like that. And so, so there is a short-term notation which was brought, for example, like this one has got a carbon with three hydrogen atoms. So this one can be abbreviated to be CH3. So that if you're given this CH3, you know you're dealing with a carbon with three hydrogen atoms. And then this one is carbon with two hydrogen atoms, so it is shown as CH2. Can you see that? CH2. This was another CH2. So the, the CH2s are one, two, three, and four. So there is this one, two, three, four. So this one, uh, you as engineers, you know that you can be able to, to summarize it. There is one, two, three, four. So you can see in bracket there how many four CH2. So, so you just put your your parentheses and then you put a subscript for just to show there are four carbon atoms. And then you put a CH3 and a CH3 at the at the beginning and at the end. Yeah. So, so these are illustrations. Uh, these are ways of of representing organic molecules. So sometimes you can be given this form and then you're told to show it like this, or you can be given like this and then you're told to show like that. Yeah? And then later you're going to see that there is an even uh, uh, more simpler way of showing, but that requires you to know to, to know some rules. And those are the rules, and these are the rules that you need to know. To know that um, uh, that if you're going to have uh, a carbon at the end. It contains three hydrogen atoms. Yeah? Like this one is at the end, it contains three hydrogen atoms. And the ones at the center, 
they contain two, uh, two hydrogen atoms, two hydrogen atoms, two hydrogen atoms, and two hydrogen atoms. So in a short while, I'm going to show you about three dimensional structures and, and how you can represent them effectively. All right? Okay. So we'll just take a short break and then we'll proceed from there.